a completely 100% mobile uh, workforce the ability to check in with each other any time of day, any day of the week. Hmm. And that's huge when you talk about a workforce that is primarily alone and that faces high depression rates and that faces mental health issues because of the job. So I appreciate that. And I love this community. I love Trucker Talk. Absolutely. These, these guys are my lifeblood on some days. Okay. Uh, but I get okay. frustrated with how TikTok does stuff. And I get frustrated with people who are bringing the, the negative political Facebook energy mm-hmm. to TikTok. I don't like that. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh yeah, I mean, for 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 that part, I I tend to agree with you. I, I really do. But as a as a overall, like I said, I I I am just not a fan of this app. But you mentioned mental health, and that is something a lot of a lot of drivers don't even touch on. We 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 talk about everything else. We talk about how to make money. We talk about how to move tandems. We talk about this, that, and the third. But we're we're not talking about the, the 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 mental health status of a driver that's that's in this seat that probably might be going through some things that's that that really really boggles the mind and 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 that driver end up either you know either driving off a cliff driving into a into a bridge driving off a bridge or in the case of uh of uh young Helen getting, you know, getting shot by the cops because there's nobody Mm -hmm. that there's nobody that's really, you know, sitting down and just being like, yo driver, I'm here for you. And nobody ain't doing that. And I I see, Mm -hmm. I I see a handful, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I could count on one hand as many, as many videos that I've seen somebody touch on that uh on that pacific topic where 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 would you like for drivers to know if there's if if there's any help or anything like that where where they can actually go to to actually know that there's somebody there for them to listen to them? you know in all honesty this is going to sound probably kind of weird but TikTok right now is what's out there. That's where your community is. That's where the people that know you and understand what you're going through are and where you can interact with them anytime you need to. There isn't really a whole lot out there for truckers regarding mental health. And I think it's for a couple of reasons. First of all, we can't admit if we have mental health issues because it could take our career away from us. Exactly. The FMCSA has written the medical guidelines as such that it's up to the doctor and there's not a lot of recourse if the doctor says, well, you're depressed and I think you're a danger to society, so I'm not going to renew your certification. You know, they have the right to do that. And so we have to be so, so careful with what we say and what we do regarding anything medical because on a whim, it could be taken, our, our entire life, lifestyle, career could be taken away from us based on one little thing. So I think that's a big part of why drivers don't talk about it. Tell I them. also think that mental health is just a hard issue. Uh, and there's not enough access to mobile therapy for drivers to be able to take their mental health into their own hands and have a professional to help them sort that out. So if we could see the development, you know, I guess we're kind of starting to see it with like better help. And I think there's some other ones where you can call and you're supposed to be able to, to, you know, call in therapy. But I think if there were some kind of a service that would collect all of the therapists um, available for phone therapy because you can do therapy over the phone. Exactly. It's not impossible. No, it isn't. Uh, and so I would love to see that happen, but it's just not out there yet. 
That's what's up. That's 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 some awesome. Uh, that's that's some that's some awesome advice for the for the powers that be. Mm-hmm. You know, to set you know mm-hmm. to set something up as far as you know as far as a simple phone call goes. You know, that's that's all that mm-hmm. person. That's all that person needs is just you know to to call mm-hmm. somebody to actually have somebody to listen to them so they can vent so they can mm-hmm. you know just just take a breath. You know, the other part of that I will throw this out there is that. Um, there are a lot of therapists currently that will do, they call it telehealth. And so you can, if you have a therapist in your area, when you're in your home area and you go and you meet with them and you build that trusting relationship with them and you decide that you want them to be your therapist, a lot of them will do phone therapy with you while you're out on the road. So you don't necessarily have to, you know, take a, a massive amount of time trying to find a therapist, you know, you, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a national hotline. There are probably therapists in your home area that Local. can help you while you're out on the road as well. All right. Allie, you, you, you recently, uh, done a video, uh, talking about, uh, a company losing out on a potentially good driver is are are you talking about yourself in that video or, or are you talking about someone else in this video and let me let me play it right quick so you'll know what i'm talking about okay So that video right there, uh, you 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 done uh, recently. What what's the context behind that video? What was going on? Uh, thanks for bringing this up. By the way, it's an interesting topic. So the context behind that was there was a career fair at school, and some of the companies that I went up to were really great and welcoming and wanting to attract people to work for them. And they didn't care whether it was a woman or not. But then there were some of the companies that uh, were male, predominantly male fields, that made it very clear that they were not interested in the ladies that approached their table. And so that particular video was a response to, I believe, a comment, I think. Um, I don't remember the exact comment. But it was just kind of about the idea that you know, these companies, they take one look at you as a female, uh, if they even get to see you in person, whether or not, or, or they just see the female box checked on your application or your resume. And there are people out there who won't even entertain the idea of hiring a female because their workforce just isn't ready for it. They aren't ready for it. Even on the video before that, uh, that that comment was from, there was a guy who said, uh, females are too dangerous for me to hire, so I don't even bother. Uh, and so there are a lot of companies out there that won't even bother deciding if they want to give me the opportunity to prove myself, let alone give me the opportunity to prove myself. Now let me ask you this: or you, just accept that I have experience. Mm-hmm. Let, let me ask you this: Do you feel that some of them truck trucking companies feel that way because of the so-called female trucking influencers that's that's blowing up on the internet? Um, I suppose it's possible, but I doubt it. Um, uh, I think that. Attire and how a female dresses, I think, yeah, there's something to that it makes a difference in someone's impression. I think that's the point of wearing nice clothes, right? Is how we dress is how is determines the impression we want to give other people about it. Mm-hmm. But 
I don't think that it's the makeup and the hair and the nails uh, that's the root of the problem. I think that's the excuse. Uh, I think the root of the problem is that putting a female into a work environment where it's not the norm and, and breaking, breaking down that uh, environment to change, you know what I mean? Yeah. That barrier and, and changing that work environment to where it becomes accessible to females is tough. It's kind of like if you were to integrate a locker room, right? Everybody right. says the locker room talk and all this stuff. So you take that locker room and now you're going to put females in it and you're handling these sensitive topics. How do you do that? How do you make that work for everybody comfortably? And to somebody who's used to an all male locker room, that's hard. That's scary. And they don't know how to do it. And that's okay. You're not, you know, you don't have to know how to do it right out of the shoot, but you got to be willing to learn. And the willingness to learn is where the root of the problem is. As far as I see it, some people are really willing to figure it out and work it out. And some guys really aren't, they don't want to know. They want their all men's locker room and that's that. They want the, they want the uh the the boys club to stay the boys club. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's their space and we don't belong, you know? And I can understand the sentiment, but I also understand that that's not the way the world works anymore. And that, you know, you can't well you can, but it's not a great idea to forego some great talent because you're more interested in the social aspect of your job than in getting the job done well. Right. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So let's go back to truck driving mm -hmm. school. Let's go back to four or five years okay. ago. Uh, what uh -huh. do you, what do you wish you would have, what do you, what do you wish you would have learned in trucking school that you learned out here the hard way? Oh, wow. So much. Um, in trucking school, I wish that I would have learned how the vehicle works. Not necessarily how to fix it, but how it all works together. Um, they teach you the pre-trip, and so I can point out parts and tell you a name, but I can't tell you what that part does. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how it works in conjunction to everything else, because they don't teach that. And when you know how your vehicle works, then you know how to use it better. And so a lot of things that I didn't know from trucking school because I didn't know how my truck worked, uh, I had to learn over time. And if I would have known, then I could have maybe not had to chain up that time or not gotten stuck in that parking lot or, you know, whatever the case may be. And so that's the one thing that I would recommend for trucking schools is start teaching everybody, you know, that it starts with the engine, the piston turns the crankshaft, the crankshaft turns the transmission, turns the clutch, turns the drive line, turns the differential, turns the wheel, you know. All right. All right. How it all works together. All right. Allie Pants. Yeah. Allie Pants. <laughs> hey, so uh, we, 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 we've been in contact with each other before and uh we uh -huh. we we came together on a uh on a mutual ground we we know a trucker uh a female trucker yeah. unfortunately covid literally took her out like like pow bang boom uh, yeah. her name yeah. her, her name is Allie Snow uh, you know her along with uh gear grinding Hyena is two of the females on TikTok that not too many people are fans of. But um uh -huh. but you uh you you know you you're a little bit closer to Allie than the latter. Have you talked to her since she came out of her coma? Um, I've commented a little bit back and forth and I follow her stuff and try to be encouraging. Um I don't really know her personally, but I do like her content and I have interacted with her before and I haven't had a bad experience with her. Uh, 
I find her to be a very interesting and, and, and cool person myself. Uh, now the other one, no, thank you. I'm good. But <laughs> when it comes to Allie, I haven't seen anything that I've had an issue with. I think she's a pretty awesome lady. All right. All right. How many, uh, since you, uh, been, since you've been rocking, uh, how, how many companies that you, uh, that you rocked out with and have you ever been fired from any of them? Um, let's see. So I have worked for three companies and the first one I did an internship, uh, right out of school with, and they opted not to turn it into, uh, a, a full-time position. So it was basically getting fired for all intents and purposes, just mm -hmm. with nice language. And, um, you know, I get it. I was hauling glue and it was oversized. It was doubled. It was really heavy. And I wasn't, uh, still the best on my skills. I was still honing my skills. So it made sense. I was like, all right, I understand that. The second company I worked for him for a couple of years, I was hauling fuel and, uh, I ended up quitting that company. Uh, there was some rough, uh, rough stuff that went down at that company and I just realized it wasn't going to get any better. So I ended up, uh, leaving that company. And it was at that point that I decided to go back to school and I found the company that I'm at now that was willing to work me part-time and work around my school and just awesome. has been really fabulous. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. It's always, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I talk about companies and the way they are supposed to treat their drivers and I talk about drivers mm -hmm. when they find that particular company that they feel that they that they can call home, you know, kind of like stay with it because, you know, the grass ain't always greener on the other side. And you, mm -hmm. you, you quit to learn that real quick when you leave and then you just be like, why did I leave? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, you I know, do. I but, do. Uh, you know, you, you found the company that, that that is willing to you know work out with you on 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 your terms and you know is it is it hard for a driver in your opinion that you know that's coming out of school to find something like that or do you think they will have to get the experience as what you got in order to get something like that i think kind of all of that uh but i also think that that's just any job in general it is hard to find the work environment where you fit. You're not likely to find it on the first try. So we all go around and we learn more and we get something from whatever work we're at until we find the job that just fits our lifestyle and fits who we are and where we feel comfortable and secure and our company feels comfortable and secure with us. Uh, there's a lot more to a job than just the pay. And I don't know if that's something that comes with maturity, understanding that, or if that's something that comes with, um, you know, needing balance in life. I don't know, but I, that's the thing is in, in, in the work environment, it's not always just about the money. You know, you have to be able to live in that environment too and not be burned out, not be taken advantage of not uh feel as though you're in you're not valuable or have more stress and you just have to keep looking until you find the place have you have you went uh you, you said the for uh it sounds like the 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 few jobs that you have it don't it don't sound like you did otr have you done otr no actually i haven't and i don't know if i want to <laughs> If I'm being you. honest, um, there's an appeal to it because it's exciting, but I also like to be home every, at least every week, right? I like my home time. So right now what I have is really nice because it's regional and it's kind of OTR because I, you know, I go out to Seattle and back from Montana and sometimes I go to South Dakota and sometimes I go different directions, um, but I'm home every week. And I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have to go very far out of my area. All right. All right. So last but not least, uh, before I get into uh, our our 
uh, crazy questions, which is called forced choices. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, what are some major challenges you think truck drivers face today? Well, like we mentioned before, mental health is a major challenge. Uh, the FMCSA is a huge challenge. Uh, I always find it funny when I hear truckers talking about all the freedoms and all the stuff. And I'm like, trucking is the least free thing you can do because the FMCSA has control over everything we do. They have control over our medical records and they have control over anything. They they have complete control over our career based on anything they want. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge. Uh, And then additionally, I think challenges are uh, learning how to continually become better at what you do, taking pride in your work. You know, I think a lot of people take pride in their work, but they forget to keep growing. Okay. And that's what I would say. All right. Ali Pants, thank you very much for coming on and chopping it up with me today. I really do appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Blackout Man. You are a citizen. So whenever you want to come on and talk with me or anything like that, man, just reach out and we'll get it on. I like it. I like it. Thank you.